If you're going to live in a tent, you have to get the proper tents. None of this weekend stuff. You have to know where you can pitch a tent to make it, make it safe. Because even, even the most robust tents won't put up with the storms. They have to be in certain positions to put up in it. There would be a, there's no telephone signal down here. There's nobody passing, so if if you did have something wrong, you're stuck. You're on your own, there's nothing else you can do. Even although it's a 10 mile round trip walking and a 50 mile train journey, that's quite easy to get supplies in. You know, it wouldn't be for the normal person, but that, that to me is easy. It's the easiest I've found. You know, I've chosen to do that. I, there's other places I could go to, which would be easier to me to, to get help. You know, but you know, I, I just choose to be down here, and I'm happy with that. I've got it down to a T. I know exactly what to do. I know what to survive, and I know what to do. I've suffered. I've suffered hypothermia, and I know what to do if I get that. You must keep yourself spotlessly clean. No shirking and washing. That means cleaning your teeth every day, washing your hands, having a bath every day, not washing your hands and face every day, wading into the water every day. You must keep yourself clean every day and then you won't get any infections. As I said, I've normally been naked doing this, but you're not getting to see that. Two years ago, where I had snow down here, it was nobody would have got down. Not even the stalkers got down in their vehicles. There was nothing would have got down here, not even the snow carts. You couldn't walk in it in snowshoes. It was three, four feet deep around the tent. Uh, I was stuck down here for three weeks. I dug paths so far just to give me some walking space and I dug a path down to the lock to get water so I could still wash and get water for cooking. Just the end of 2007 I started getting problems with my my breathing and I went one day I woke up and found I was pretty ill went to the doctors and they thought I'd had a heart attack um, so I was treated for a heart attack but I was pretty ill got a heart scan and they came up with that I had dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a life-threatening condition. And I was told I needed a heart transplant. So I told them I didn't want a heart transplant. I wasn't wanting considered for that. And I thought, right, well, if I've got only a short life expectancy, I'm just going to come out and live in the wild, which is what I was going to do when I retired. You know, and now that I'm 65 and been out for 12 years, that's what I would have been doing now anyway, I would have sold up. I got a heart scan two years ago, and my heart scan showed that my heart wasn't dilated anymore. So I came off a of medication, and all of a sudden I became as fit as a fiddle again. But unfortunately, in the last four weeks, I've had another heart scan and it's come back again. So there's been a relapse and it's quite serious at the moment. So I'm onto a different medicine, but um, the heart's relapsed again. But fortunately, I still feel pretty fit. But I know it's quite a life-threatening thing I've got. And it, I don't know what will happen to me. I might, I might not wake up one day, like, which would be the ideal situation, I suppose. But I'm, I'm happy as Larry, I'm really contented with what I'm doing.